Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at this special edition of Igor Sikorsky, Aviation Pioneer. Before we begin, just a quick reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. Moving right along, mythology tells us one thing while archaeology tells us another. Who was Igor Sikorsky? What has he to do with aviation? Did he invent the helicopter? Is he still relevant today? Let's begin by taking a look at this giant in the world of aviation. Sikorsky was born in the city of Kiev on May 25 in 1889. He was the youngest of five children. In 1906, at the age of 17, he was determined that his future lay in engineering and he left his homeland to study in Paris. In 1907, he returned home and enrolled at the Mechanical College of the Kiev Polytechnic Institute. In the summer of 1908, he accompanied his father to Germany, where he learned of the accomplishments of the Wright brothers and Ferdinand von Zeppelin. It was at this time that he decided to focus his studies on aviation. By the start of World War I in 1914, Sikorsky's airplane research and production business in Kiev was flourishing. This was due to his factory producing quality bombers. However, after the Russian Revolution in 1917 and threats by the new Bolshevik regime to shoot him, Sikorsky fled his homeland, leaving behind his wife Olga, who refused to leave Russia, and daughter Tanya. While in France, he was offered a contract to design a new and more powerful Muromats-type plane. By November of 1918, the war ended and the government stopped subsidizing military orders. It was at this time that he decided to move to the United States. In the U.S., Sikorsky first worked as a school teacher and a lecturer while looking for an opportunity to work in the aviation industry. In 1923, he formed Sikorsky Manufacturing Company in Roosevelt, New York. Sikorsky was able to find many backers and he produced the S-29 one of the first twin-engine aircraft in the U.S. His plane also had the capacity to carry 14 passengers at a speed of 115 miles per hour. In 1928, Sikorsky became a naturalized citizen of the United States. By 1929, he moved his company to Stratford, Connecticut. It was at this time that he became part of the United Aircraft Transport Corporation. Today, the company is known as the United Technologies Corporation. By June of that year, the company manufactured flying boats, such as the S-42 Clipper, which was used by Pan Am for transatlantic flights. Meanwhile, Sikorsky continued his work on vertical flying. On February 14, 1929, he filed for a patent for direct lift. His idea was an amphibian aircraft which used compressed air using propellers for thrust. What was it? A helicopter? Christened the VS-300, Sikorsky found great success. This led to the R-4, which became the world's first mass-produced helicopter. Sikorsky's designs have become quite popular in most of the helicopters produced today. In 1932, he joined the faculty of the University of Rhode Island to form an aeronautical engineering program and remained with the university until 1948. During his tenure, he also lectured at the University of Bridgeport. In 1966, Sikorsky was inducted to the International Air and Space Hall of Fame. Igor Sikorsky died in his home in Easton, Connecticut on October 26, 1972. He was succeeded and buried in St. John the Baptist Russian Orthodox Cemetery located in Stratford, Connecticut. Igor Sikorsky was survived by his second wife, Elizabeth, daughter Tanya, who at the age of six left Russia and joined her father in the United States. Sikorsky also had four sons, Sergei, Nikolai, uh, Igor Jr., and George. This brings us to the end of Igor Sikorsky, Aviation Pioneer. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of Traveler's Tales. Just a reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. For your convenience, we have also posted our email address and Instagram information. We enjoy hearing from our subscribers, 
Don't hesitate to contact us with any questions or comments you may have. If you haven't subscribed to Traveler's Tales, please do. This really is the best way to help our channel grow. Traveler's Tales will return with another special edition. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and fact, Artistos.